we have so many past students who have done very, very well all over the world. And the school continues to be a very outstanding institution, in the, not just in the community, not just in Kingston, but in Jamaica. And our prayers are that God will just continue to bless them, bless the parents, bless the teachers, bless the students, as some of them are going to be moving on to other schools and that they'll continue holding up the flag high. Not only the flag of Elam Basic School, but when they spend the time here, we hope that in some measure they will get to know God. And this knowledge of God will stay with them right through their lives. You know, all, this, all, all the studies have shown that it's very important when children are young to introduce them to God, to introduce them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it gets harder as they get older. So it's really a pleasure for us as a church to have the school here to work with them and to certainly have you here, parents, coming along. Could we just recognize at this time the parents who are here? Parents, could you stand for us? And let's give them a hand as they stand. Parents of the Elim Basic School. Wow. Thank you, parents. You may be seated. Okay, you, you're going to be seeing and hearing the children a little later on, but the teachers who are here, could you please stand for us? Wow. Church, be in prayer for these people, for this important job that they have. And we trust that later in the program, we will get, get a chance to ask God's blessing on our, ch on our school, including our, parents, including our teachers. Thank you very much. We also have members of the, the school board. I don't know how many members of the school board are here. If you are here from the school board, I know Mrs. Buckley. She, she's the chairman of the board. Please stand, Mrs. Buckley, and show them. Okay. And we're doing this because we're asking you to remember the school. The school needs support. The school needs... We, we, like everything else, we need financial support, we need prayer support, and we need moral support. So we ask you, you know, please bear the school in mind as we continue the important work of guiding the lives of these children. A special welcome, in case you think we forgot you, to our online audience. We know that you, you have been faithful over these, these COVID years. And you have stayed. And we're so happy to have you. And we trust that every blessing that we get here in the hall will also be yours and much more. So we're happy to have you join us. And we trust that this morning too for you, it will be a wonderful and special time when you connect with God. You know, coming to church, the most important thing about coming to church, it's nice to see each other. And we're happy to see you. But what really makes church special is if in, if in some way we can hear from God. And not only that, we can receive a special blessing from God Almighty. And this is our prayer that this morning, for the moments we spend here, God will be so happy with our worship that he will pour his blessings upon us. And everyone who is here, whether online or in the hall, will receive a special blessing from God Almighty. Because God is God loves to bless us, you know. So let's make sure we can, in fact, receive this blessing. So we're going to be hearing from our children this morning. All these special, talented children are going to be sharing our program. And um, at this time, we're going to ask Joshua Taylor and Tawana Gordon to come and do... Oh, Gordon. Gordon. Okay. Tawana Gordon and Joshua Taylor to come and do the scripture reading for us.
and they're special. I should remember that I should mention that these two are the 2023-24 winners of the Grace Morrison Foundation Scholarship for Healing Basic School. So let's give them a big hand. Joshua and Tohana. Thank you. That was very good. Let's give them a hand again. Wow. We're going to invite Deshaun Smith, a past student, to come and sing for us. I love you, Lord. Let's give him a hand as he comes. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing. Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so the goodness of God. I said I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and in darkest nights. You were close like no other. I said I know you as a father. I know you as a friend, I will sing in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so Thank you. 
goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. When my life lay down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Sean? I am 11. What school are you attending now? Don Robin Primary School. Okay. What what grade are you in? What grade are you in? Grade 6. Okay. Let's continue to pray for the Sean. What a wonderful thought. You know, there are many persons who, there are many other things that run after them. But the idea that God's goodness runs after us. And we pray that for everyone here this morning, that could be our testimony. That, you know, if it never happened before, this will be the start of something big in your lives where God's goodness runs after you. It can happen to any one of us, and we trust that that will be our experience as we worship here this morning in this wonderful service. Thank you so much, Deshaun. We're going to continue praying for you as you move on from Don Robin to Calabar High School. Okay, we're going we're gonna to hear the little children as they read their Bible verses. So we're going to ask you, we need a few more mics up here. Because first of all, we're going to have the three-year-olds doing their Bible verse, then the four-year-olds. So we're going to ask, first of all, the three-year-olds to come. Let's mic them properly as they come. Come please, three-year-olds, all of you come right up here. I want to see you properly and hear you and applaud you. All on this side, on this side, guys. We're going to bring them.
applaud them. Yes. One more time, one more time. Okay, and now the four-year-olds. to pray for these precious children as they grow up that they will just put into practice more what they have been learning and be grow into real men and women for God okay we're going to invite class three now to come um. and do a special song for us Okay, we're ready for the track.
As the tech team gets the track ready, let's just continue holding up these children, these wonderful children, and the teachers in prayer in our hearts that God will just continue to bless them and enrich their lives as they grow up in oftentimes trying and troubling times. But God is able. Our God is able. And we know he will. The tech team is getting everything ready, so we soon hear the track coming out. So, boys and girls, you ready to sing? Yeah! Okay. Sorry about the delay, folks, but uh, getting the track ready for them. They have practiced with the track, so we want to have them singing with the track that they practice with. So please pardon us.
Well done, well done. Three year old. Okay, we're going to hear their Bible verse now from this talented bunch. Our Bible verse is taken from Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord. Lord, with all thy heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Still the Lord will all thy heart and lean up to thy own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a hand. You can take the mic first. Let's give them a hand again. I don't know about you, but my heart is so full hearing and seeing these children. And we just, we just pray for them that, you know, somehow they will have a real connection with God Almighty. And he will continue to direct their paths as they have been singing. We're going to invite now the five-year-olds to come and do their Bible verse. Oh, the, Okay. So let's let's give all the children a big hand again. They did so very well. And as as the word of God says, little child shall lead them. Wow. Okay. We are we we gonna be having Mrs. Silvera. Mrs. Silvera Charmaine, she's gonna come and do another, a song for us as we continue and prepare to hear what God has to say for us. And I'm told that Deshaun is going to do another number for us. Okay, so we're going to hear from Deshaun first. And then... And then Mrs. Silvera. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemy. Till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am a child of God. 
from my mother's womb you have chosen me by name I've been born again into a family your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am a child of God. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. My tears are drowned in perfect love. You rescue me so I can stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. My tears are drowned in perfect love. You rescue me so I can stand and sing. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. Let's hear the word of our children. That what he sings about can be deposited for any one of us this morning. John 1, 12 says, as many as received him, God gave the right to become children of God. All they needed to do, as one translation put it, was to believe on his name. And that can apply to every single one of us here this morning. And we pray and trust that this morning, if we don't know him, we may get to know him before we leave this morning okay we're gonna ask mrs sylvia to come and share with us now hallelujah 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 praise god i'm wondering why you're so quiet you know aside in heaven before the throne of God. Angels keep worshiping God 24 sevens. And they keep saying holy, 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 holy. And I'm here this morning to minister. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Mm -hmm. As the world look upon us. As we travel along, they say we've got nothing, but they are so wrong in our hearts. We rejoice in. And I wish they could see. So I thank you, Lord, for your blessings on us. We've got 
got the roof up above us and a good place to sleep. Food on our tables and shoes on our feet. Oh, we gave you your love lord and a fine family so i thank you lord for your blessings on us lord we know we're not worthy and our clothes are not new but i always be thankful and mm, and that all that really matters though the world may not see so i thank you lord for your blessings on us we've got a roof up above us and a good place to sleep food on our table and shoes on our feet lord you gave us your love lord and the fine fine so we thank you lord for your blessings on us amen amen thank mrs silver as for that word a reminder to us that god pours out his blessing on us and we ought to be thankful because god has so much more i think in store for us and i think this morning god has a very special blessing for us i want to ensure that nobody leaves here without receiving the blessing that god has for them this morning we, we, we're going to be inviting our brother nicholas walsh god gave him a special message to give to you i'm going to ask you to listen very keenly as our brother nicholas walsh comes and shares with you what god has told him to tell you Wow, 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 wow. It is always a good thing to be in the house of the Lord. And so, while as I stand here and I look at all of you wonderful people, the beautiful children, I say, yes, you know, this is truly the day of the Lord. Because I know that someone will be blessed today. Amen. And I know that some people are expecting a word from the Lord. Amen, church? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, if you are expecting a word from the Lord, you don't need to look any further. You don't need to go anywhere because guess what? The word is right before your eyes. 
If you now take your Bibles with me and turn to Exodus. Chapter 20. And we'll be reading from verse 18 down to verse 21. So that's Exodus chapter 20. Verse 18 to verse 21. So this is what the Lord said. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said to Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, Fear not. For God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off. But Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. Let us pray. Dear God, we come before your presence this day. Just like oh Moses draw near to you, mighty God, we acknowledge that you are consuming fire, burning away all sins. So God, we come to you not with fear in our hearts, but with ha and woe because you're a majestic God filled with power and awe. As you rain down on Mount Sinai, I pray you rain down on us tonight, Father God, or on us today as we witness your words, as we hear them, as we listen them, and as we obey them, dear God, I pray, mighty God, that you will make us like Moses, that we will draw near to you and not stand afar off. Oh God, have mercy upon our soul. Amen. Amen. I want you all to close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Relax. And visualize this sight. There were hundreds of people standing in front of a mountain. They bathed, they cleaned them fresh. They move on, clean clothes, you know. They are smelling good. They, you know, they use them axe and all these wonderful things. They smell really nice. And they are standing there waiting on God. And then all of a sudden, there's darkness, there's lightning, and there's thunder, and there's the booming sound. Boom, 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 and then whoosh. Remember a couple months ago when you feel the earthquake? Yes, the ground start to shake. And they experienced something that day. It was the presence of God. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And God speak to them. I am the Lord. Your God. Who freed you from bondage. You shall have no other God. But me. And as the people hear these words. Their hearts quake within them. They tremble. And they say, no, sir. No, sir. Me can't take it no more. But me, back off. But before they reach to that point, this happened some time ago when Joseph, Called for his family to come in Egypt. There is food here. 
The land is green. There is grain here. Come. And everybody come. And so God bless them in the land. They multiply. You know, and then just get bigger and great. And they just spread out in the land of Goshen. And so it happened that when Pharaoh saw that the people were mighty, that the people were strong, that when them are, you know, have baby, baby just a come out, vloops, vloops, vloops. Pharaoh said to them, yeah, hey, listen, you see them people here? Yeah? Enough of them, you know. What if they want to leave Egypt? What if they want to turn them back upon we and fight against we, we are with our enemies? You know something? Here we are going to do. We are going to bandage them, you know. We are going to put them in a slavery, you know. We are going to make them walk, you know. Right? We are going to make them work hard. And so, Pharaoh said, task mass over them, put hard labor upon them, and they will ball out to God. God, where are you? But in the fullness of time, God heard their cry, and he came down on a mountain again to meet Moses in the burning bush. And he says, Moses, Moses, where you're standing is holy ground. And so God quit Moses, and he charged him to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. And in the earlier books of Exodus, God warred against Egypt, against the gods of Egypt, and God destroyed every single one of them. Imagine one God destroying ten gods all by himself. That's how God rescued the Israelites. And he take them from Egypt and says, Listen, me love you no. And me want you no to be my special people. And me want you no to be a kingdom of priests for me. So you no can tell everybody how to worship me and how to live. And guess what the people them say? You want to guess now? Them say, yeah man. Yeah man God. Yeah man. Yeah man. Anything you say, we are doing it. And so God said, all right then, all right then, here you want to do. Want to know beard? Want to know change in the clothes and wash them? Consecrate in yourself, you know? Yeah. Want to fix up on yourself proper, proper. Because guess what? On the third day, I come chat with you now. And so this is where we find our text. That the people were gathered in front of the mountain. And God descended on it. And instead of running to God... They stand afar and say, no, sir, me can't bother with this. No, sir, me can't take it no more. No, sir. No, sir, man. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. God power is too great. No, sir. In the church today, there are teachers. There are parents. There are uncles, there are aunties, you know, there are well witches, you know, there is people on the back, you know, there are brothers and sisters. And guess what? This message is for you. In 2024, I know that there are going to be challenges. I know that there are going to be problems, you know. If you are like the children of Israel and you feel as if your situation is like the mountain that they face, something that, that, that evokes fear and anxiety, I want to let you know that there is hope for you. You know, sometimes as teachers, because, you know, I'm in that profession as well, you know, as teachers dealing with these little ones, you really take faith. You really take faith, you know. Strong courage, you know. Listen, I remember one day while we were working with one of the, the, one of the little baby child. 
He was still in basic school. I don't know what happened. He's a nice, cool, calm, collective child. But I don't know what happened on that day. Somebody got trouble with him and the boy explode like a firecracker. The boy dash kick, fist, everything. And if teachers are not strong enough to manage, then we say, no, sir, me can't bother. Me not get enough PFE deal with them pitney. Yeah. Jesus. Brothers, sisters, friends. Life, when it hits, it might hit very hard. And dealing with children, it is, it, it is like you stepping into uncertainty every single day. You don't know what they will come with next, ne next day, right? So, so, so teachers, teachers, your foot have to be well grounded, Understand? You have to be well grounded because certain problems that arise, they're very difficult to deal with. Especially when you have to call in the parents when you're dealing with a very sensitive and delicate matter. You might no one touch it because if you touch it, you're going to touch ants nest. But guess what? But guess what? It is your responsibility as the teacher to ensure that that child get the best, no, sorry, not the best, the very, very best education. And I know that teachers are passionate about teaching. So when there are problems, when there is not enough resources, when the pain is enough, when you feel pain in your back or your foot, you still come to school. Because you believe in the mission that every child can learn. That every child must learn. So, teachers, if you're like the Israelites today who is facing that great mountain, guess what? There is news for you today. I have good news to tell you because the God that we serve is a good God. You know, believe me? Look, as, look where the Lord has brought you from. Just look. Just think of last year. Think of all the problems. Just think of all the challenges that you have to overcome. Remember when COVID strike? Oh, boy. Online. My gosh, online. No people don't like online, you know. No people don't like online. We soon reach them. We soon reach the parents them. But teachers, I just want to tell you some good news. The next time you have problem, the next time you're going through your situation in school, I want you to make a note of this. There is a psalm, a very powerful psalm. It is Psalm 121. When the teacher them too much, or uh, when the students them too much feel, when the pressure really uh, get there, when you are this much away from getting angry, cross and miserable, I want you to lock up in one of the bathroom or the staff room and just flick out your Bible. It can depend on your phone or the written word. It no matter. It's sweeter as you read it. It is Psalm 121. It says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my health. My health cometh from the Lord which made heaven and heard. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He shall keep thee, keepeth thee, will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall pre pre ye shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this 
time forth and even for So teachers, see the next day, Monday morning, Pitney are your problem, parents are your problem, you're not worried your head. You just quote the psalm here. And you read it. It's when, and, and it's when you read it. Yes, when you read it, you just left a problem. And allow God to work it out. Allow God to work it out. You just want to know, say, your soul is in the right place. Your heart is in the right place. Now, parents, one of the things that I forget to know. Ah, parents. I know you're rough too, you know. I know you're rough too. Balancing work and family. I know you do something, you know. I know you do something. If you work nine to five, plus traffic, plus dinner, plus picnic homework, you know pretty. You know pretty. Right? So listen to me, parents. Listen to me, parents. You have to pierce on yourself now, you know. You are not a superwoman or a superman. You have to pierce on yourself. Because somebody who wants to work them, not even who knows, you don't know if you do it on yourself. <laughs> right? Who no not know? Right? Who no not know? And let, guess what? Someone who have the saying, say, I must see them. Teach, I must send homework for them. <laughs> no. No. Apart from balancing, you know, work and family, you have to, have to, you have to also deal with the children. And sometimes some of them really test your feet, you know. You know, them, 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 them push her to the max. You know, like, you know, have this child, you know, every day, maybe say, sit down, stand up back. Sit down, stand up back. I turn my back. Sit down. As soon as I turn my back, stand up. Like, what's wrong with these children? Come in, like I said, this not hearing, right? We don't know. But guess what? We, are, we, we have to be patient with them, you know. We, we, we have to take with time with them, you know. But guess what? We have to understand as well that, that there is um, a developmental stage that they are going through, you know, bit by bit by step. And guess what, parents, we know if we make them rule we. You know? Don't let them rule you. You are the parent. So, parents, sometimes it is difficult. Sometimes it is rough, especially if you are a single parent. You know? And, and, and especially if there is different type of parenting style from daddy and mommy. Mommy, rough and rough. Because she know the right thing, but daddy said, hmm, yeah, man, just do your thing. So the child is confused. And so instead of getting a better child, they get a more, you know? Yeah. So, parents, God is there for you. You know, God did not just give you them to just leave you alone. You know, and leave you dry, right? God gave them for a reason. God love children, you know. Me did, me did tell you that? God love Pitney. Man, you don't know God love Pitney. God tell you soon, if you trouble one of them, watch me and you. And then when I'm a power with him, special people, them, him just say, listen, come here, look at child. If Uno can be one of this, special look at one here, Uno, Uno have everything. That's how God love Pitney. Plus, guess what? I'll leave the angel I watch over them. So, parents, on another note, there's a psalm for you guys. I want you to share with you guys. And this is Psalm 27. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So whenever you feel like the pressure of parenthood is too much for you, you just go to this psalm. Psalm 27. It, it continues, says number two. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an oath should encompass 
and encompass against me. My heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. And if you continue to read that psalm, it will provide strength for your bone. It will give you energy. It, 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 it will redirect your focus from hunger and fear and anxiety to one of peace and calm. Because that's what God's words do, you know. It gives us a sense of peace. All right. Now, we get two psalms, right? And we talk to parents and we talk to who else? God and our listen, we talk to parents and teacher. But, but, here yeah, this is now. I have a problem, right? So, my little problem is, what if, just what if you are here and you guys quote these verses, right? And you believe in yourself that, hey, must I be a Christian to gain these blessings from God? You know? Like, like, should I actually have to give my life to God so that these blessings can come upon me? If you have those questions in your heart and you believe that, you know, you want to have a closer relationship with God, you want to draw nearer to God, there is a second mountain I want to tell you about. On that mountain, there was people standing at the foot of that mountain as well. And on that mountain, there was darkness as well. There was a little thunder, a little lightning, a little quake. But on that mountain, there was a cross in the middle. Bam! And one to, and on its right and left, there are two other crosses. But the one on the middle cross... There was a man there. And, and he was not any ordinary man. Right? He was fully man and fully God. He was a man full of grace and truth. He was a man with no deceit. He was a man who had a mission and a purpose. And, 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 and as the man hung up there on the cross. Blood dripping down his hands and his feet and his back and his head. And people were looking on. And the man said in, in a sorrowful voice, Father, 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 forgive them, for they know not what they have done. And as he tried to breathe again, <gasps> As his breath was leaving his body, he says, Father, it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and he died. And as he died, the big bad policeman who carried out the execution look up and say, Yo, we are no say. I did some man here. I did the son of God. And then while the people there witness the quaking and the shaking and the darkness, they beat their chest. Tears roll along their eye in regret, saying, Hmm, what have we done? What have we done? In front of that mountain. Some people believe it was just a story. Some people believe it is just history. Some people believe it is just something make up to fair people. But me and you know that it is the truth. It is the truth that God came to seek and to save that which was lost. If you are here today. And you have not. Been. To the mount. 
of Calvary. There's good news. There is news for you. Guess what? There is still room at the cross. There is room at the cross for persons who are still going through their difficulties on a day-to-day -day basis. If you parents of a difficulty raising your child, take him back to the maker. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the maker. Take him back to Jesus. Teachers, if you are struggling to cope under the pressure, there's room at the cross. There is room at the cross. One mountain represents fear, anxiety, and challenges. This mountain, Calvary Mountain, represents hope, a new life. As we embrace 2024, let us embrace the life and hope that Jesus brings. Today is Founders Day for the Vesey School. You might be asking, Brother Nicholas, I hear you. I hear you. And you might feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit talking to you right now. You understand that you are not near God. You understand that you need to be nearer. There is good news. Jesus is here today. Jesus, the one who comes to save, is here today. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 11, it says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Won't you accept this forgiveness, this grace, and this new life? May God bless you all. I believe God is speaking to us this morning. God is speaking to somebody here this morning who as yet have not made that step of putting their hands in the hands of the man who still the water. Haven't given their hearts and their lives to God. And this morning is your moment of decision. So we're going to give you an opportunity at this time. Having heard the minister from our children. The Bible says from the most of babes and sucklings, having heard it from our sister who sang, having heard it from the preacher, we want to give you an opportunity to respond to the word of God. So I'm going to ask the team to put up the prayer on the screen, the prayer of real a prayer of decision, a prayer of commitment, a prayer of responding to God. And we want to give you the opportunity at this time. To answer to God this morning. So this morning is a red letter day in your life. When you make a decision, you move from death unto life. Because this meeting, well, you know, it's a great meeting, a nice meeting. But it can be a life-changing meeting 
if we as individuals decide that we want to have a change in our lives this morning and it's possible for everybody the, the little children the bigger ones it comes by simple faith in christ so we're gonna i'm gonna say this prayer and i'm gonna ask you to repeat it after me not just words mean it in your heart and if you if you said mean it in your heart god will hear and god will answer and god will make that change take place we we'll talk about it as a miracle of new birth. It's, it's amazing that no matter who we are, where we're coming from, through the power of God and the work of the Holy Spirit, God can actually make us anew. No matter what our, our stories, no matter what our histories, God can actually make us anew. And a new, brand new life can start this morning if we respond to God. So let's just say this prayer after me. And remember, you're saying it in your hearts to God who is listening, who is hearing. Dear God, I am a sinner. Thank you for your gift of salvation. Made possible through the death on a cross of your son Jesus. I repent of my sins and accept Jesus now as my personal Savior and Lord of my life. Thank you, God, for hearing my prayer and accepting me into your family. On the authority of God's word. My friends. If you have said this prayer. And you mean it. God has heard it. And God. Will have done a work in your heart. The Bible talks about it being born again. There was a time you were born into God. In, into, your, into your family. But by a miracle. By the work of God's Holy Spirit. He actually makes you anew. If you, if you reach out to God in this way, in, in sincerity, God hears and God actually makes you a brand new person. So if you said that prayer and you meant it, then God has heard and God has actually given you a new birthday. This would be a new birthday for you when you have now born again into God's family. So we're going to ask, ask you to we, we're going to sing this, uh, this song. Reach out and touch the Lord as he's passing by. Because he's not too busy to hear our hearts cry. And if you have prayed this prayer and you meant it, we're going to ask you right where you are just to stand as an indication to us that, yes, I said this prayer and I meant it. And we will reach out to you and spend a bit more time with you, explain to you what you have done, and ensure that you understand that God has heard and that God has made you a brand new person. So as we sing this song, if you said this prayer in your mind, we're going to ask you to stand in the place where you are as a testimony that, yes, today is the day I have given my life to God. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. You'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart cry. Just stand if you made this decision. If you said this prayer, you meant it. Just stand where you are. And we will, amen. Thank God for this, brother. Anybody else? If you said this prayer, you meant it. Just stand where you are as an indication, not to us, but to God, that yes, this is my moment of decision. Let's sing it one more time. The Lord as he passes. There's nobody who's so far from God that God can't hear you. There's nobody who's too young that God can't hear you. Nobody who's too old that God can't hear you. So we're asking you, think about what you said. And if you stand as an indication that you are making a mo this a moment of decision in your life.
Okay. Thank you very much. We're going to ask our Ella Buckley to come. We're going to offer a special word of prayer for this gentleman as he has stood indicating that he's given his life to God. And we're going to also be having a pastoral prayer for the school teachers and for the rest of us. Brother Buckley. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father and our God, we're just so thankful to you for this morning, the fact that we can come here, open the church doors, and we could fellowship, and we could preach your word and hear from you. We thank you this morning for the word from your man's servant. And as we all leave here and even contemplate now, Lord, we ask that we will apply the words to our hearts. Lord, we thank you for this brother who has stood as an indication that he wants to enter into a personal saving relationship with the Lord Jesus. We just thank you for the courage and the faith and trust. And that indeed this morning you will and have heard his prayer and accept him as a child of thine. Father, we know the angels in heaven are now dancing. Because if one unsaved comes, they are happy and so are we. Lord, we continue to extend this invitation even as we break up that those here who may be contemplating the message will still see the need to come and to indicate that they would love to hear more about Jesus and to give their life to him. Lord, I want to this morning thank you for the Elim Early Childhood Development Center. It was founded years ago and it continues today, Lord, to impact the lives of many. We saw this morning young Deshaun, who's a graduate who sings for you. Lord, put every student before you now. Lord, we pray for their intellectual development. Lord, we pray for their social and emotional development. We pray for their spiritual development, Lord that each of these students will come to know you as Lord and Savior, and that they will model the Christian lifestyle as they go through this world. Lord, we pray for the parents, Lord. They have been faithful. They have sent them out. You have provided for them. And we thank you that, Lord, they, they have continued to rear these youngsters. Lord, we know the challenges of parenthood. But we present all the parents to you. And I pray that they too will seek to know more about you and to establish a relationship which is a saving one. Father, we thank you for the teachers. Lord, these are special, gifted, talented people who you have raised up. They have trained great men and women in society, businessmen, professionals, all kind and we just thank you for your commitment to the work here and that you will continue to be with them may they consider what they're doing as a ministry and they will continue to grow up and nurture these young ones for us we thank you for them and we pray to lord that they too will maintain a saving relationship with you father continue to bless us as we depart from here shortly we give you thanks in jesus name amen Thank you. We're going to ask one of our male counselors to come and meet this brother here and just continue to guide him as he continues on the steps in this new, this brand new life that he has entered into. In fact, let's, let's, let's give him a hand because it's an important step that he has with courage taken and we, our prayers are with him as he continues to grow. He's a big man and yet a baby. A baby in Christ. And we just trust as he takes these new steps 
it will be a time of joy as he learns more about what God has in store for him. We're going to ask the team now to give us the notices for the rest of the week for the church. So let's just watch the screen and let's see what's happening. Good morning, saints and friends. The following. Good morning, saints and friends. The following are the notices of upcoming meetings and events. Our Sunday school will be held this morning at 11.30 a.m. And on Wednesday, our prayer and Bible study meeting will be held at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. Additionally, the funeral service for the late Rosie Robinson will be held this Friday at 2 p.m. at the Cedar Grove Baptist Church in Gregory Park, Portmore. A second Thanksgiving service will also be held in St. Elizabeth along with the burial this Saturday at 10 a.m. Please continue to pray for and call our sick and shut-in believers. Please remember to reach out to these persons who have special days this week and just let them, just remind them how special they are and wish them God's blessing on their lives. I want to say a special thank you to those who supported the Grace Morrison Foundation's benefit performance of the play on Friday night. I know your sides are hurting you from laughing so much. It was a really enjoyable evening and we want to thank those who supported us and we trust that, you know, um, we, we know we can depend on your support as we continue supporting all the basic schools in the Charlotte Grand Spain area. This has been a really special morning. Um, what has made it so special to me, certainly, is seeing all of you here. You know, we're nice, it's nice seeing all the regular faces, but seeing so many faces we don't know, that, that just makes it extra special. I want to issue a very special invitation for you. We know you may have your own church, but if you don't, you're welcome to come and meet us every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for, for our, communion, our, our community service. And of course, church is not just what happens on a Sunday. Church is a life, you know, so it, it, you, know, you can become involved in the life of our church here. We'd be so very happy to have you. We pray that as you go this morning, God will continue to bless you. We will bless our dear, precious children, bless the school, bless the teachers. And somehow this week is going to be a very special week in our lives. As we rehearse what we heard this morning and as we, with the help of God, try to apply it to our lives. So may the blessings of God be upon us as we go this morning. May we have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning. Still good morning. Well, good midday. 
And God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And thanks again for being here with us this morning.